Betty has a sister, Amy. Gail is Betty's mother. Meanwhile, Dan is Gail's father and Samantha is Dan's mother. Can you figure out how Amy is related to Dan? Here's why. Amy is Betty's sister, and Betty is the daughter of Gail. Therefore, Amy is another daughter of Gail. We also know that Dan is Gail's father. Therefore, Dan is Amy's grandfather. Betty is going on a date, and she's a little late. Her boyfriend, Stan, is already waiting for her inside their favorite coffee shop. Can you find him? It's this guy on the right. He has a small gift box on the table. After the date, Betty takes a car sharing to go home. The car is parked at this point. Can you figure out the only point Betty can reach? If Betty takes this weird route, she can only reach point three. One of the most popular mailing websites is facing a system error. That's why the passwords of some clients are changed. Betty writes a message to the company's representative. My password is altered. I'm not able to log in. The company replies. This time, your password is distinct and it has eight letters, out of which two are the same as in your previous password. Betty replies. Thanks. Now I can log in. Can you figure out Betty's old and new passwords? Her new password is distinct, and the old one is altered. Betty arrives at her favorite swimming pool and spots something really weird. Can you see it too? Someone swapped these guys' shadows. After swimming training, Betty goes to the public shower. There are other people in shower cubicles nearby. Can you spot who's unwanted here? This person on the left should probably use the men's bathroom. He has only one shampoo bottle, while ladies usually bring a bunch of skincare products. Betty meets her best friend Rob. He always tells the truth. Rob says, "I have one specific whole number on my mind. It's one." Two or three. You can ask me just one question, but I can only reply yes or no, or I don't know. What question will you ask to figure out the number I'm thinking about? Can you help, Betty? She should say, "I have one whole number on my mind. It's between two and three." Is the number I'm thinking of smaller or equal to your number? This way, if Rob replies no, then the number is one. If he replies yes, the number is three. And if he replies I don't know, the number is two. Betty got a job as a cashier at a movie theater. A group of her first customers approached the ticket kiosk. Four mothers, two grandmothers, and four daughters. What's the minimum number of tickets they need to buy? Only six. Betty has three keys that open three different doors. How many attempts does she need to figure out the key for each door? Betty will need six attempts. First, she has to check the first key and spend three attempts for three doors. Then, check the second key. Two attempts for the remaining two doors, and then use the third key to open the last door. Betty enters the cafeteria and spots a thief right away. Can you see this person too?
This elegant lady in the chair has a plastic detector attached to the stolen clothes. Someone robbed the movie theater. Betty calls the police and they arrest three suspects. Officers check the guy's passports. Can you spot a fake ID? Most passport pictures have a white background, so the one in the middle is fake. Late at night, Betty is walking home in a snowstorm. She meets her neighbor walking a dog in the street and freaks out. Can you guess why? The dog leaves footprints from only two paws. Betty continues her walk and sees another odd thing. Can you spot it too? It should be the moon, not Saturn. Betty enters her apartment building and meets three neighbors in the elevator. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? This lady on the left, she's wearing a moon necklace. Betty goes to sleep and wakes up in an arena. The speakers announce that she must fight with one of these three hybrid creatures. Which one should she choose to stay alive? A polar bear with the head of a tiger, an elephant with a wolf head, or a hybrid with a face and body of a huge squid and the legs of a human? Betty should choose the third hybrid. Since its body has gills, it won't be able to breathe and fight outside water. After the fight, Betty gets an invitation to meet the major investor of this competition, King Harold. She enters a big, beautiful hall and sees six people sitting in front of her. They're wearing the same outfit and look very similar. It's very hard to tell who's the real king here. But after a couple of minutes, Betty approaches one of them, bows and says, Nice to meet you, your majesty. How did she know who's the real king? All the other guys were looking at the king very attentively to imitate his manners and actions. Meanwhile, the real king, Harold, was sitting calmly. Betty returns home and faces bad news. Her cat, Fluffy, is missing. Betty questions her neighbors. Lily says, Sorry, I didn't see any cats. I'm working from home. I spent all day working on my new book. Vanessa said, I haven't seen Fluffy today, and it's cool because I have a terrible allergy to cats. And Bob said, I think I heard a cat meowing on the balcony a couple of hours ago. Can you guess who stole the cat? Nobody. Fluffy's been hiding under Betty's couch all this time. Betty's boyfriend, Stan, lives just a couple of blocks away from her place. Betty calls him on FaceTime and invites him over. But Stan says, Sorry, honey. I've just got home feeling very sick. I'd rather go to bed early. Betty yelled, Liar! And hung up. Why? Take a look at Betty's window. It's pretty dark. Stan lives only two blocks away, but there's a bright blue sky in his background, which means he's definitely not at home. Betty makes a beautiful sandcastle and then lies down. She falls asleep. In a while, Betty wakes up and sees that someone has ruined her castle. She asks three persons hanging out nearby. Who did it? Kelly replies, I like your castle and took a couple of pictures for my social. Then I left to get some ice cream. When I came back, I saw the castle was completely ruined. Olivia said, I'm sorry, I was swimming far from the shore. When I returned to the shore, I didn't notice any castles. And Tom said, Sorry, lady, I don't see anything because I'm blind. The wind must have destroyed your castle. You shouldn't have to make it five stories high. Can you spot a liar?
Tom is lying. He said he was blind. How did he learn the castle architecture in detail? Betty is using an app to find accommodation for her vacation. She likes three offers. Rose invites her to stay in a cozy bedroom on the fourth floor of her luxurious villa for the price of $50 per night. Jane is ready to host one person in a tiny guest house in her backyard for $30. And Tyler offers to rent his boat for $200 per night. Fishing equipment is included. Only one of these advertisements isn't fake. Can you guess which one? This villa is three stories, and Tyler's picture is hanging on the pier. He's a runaway thief. So, Jane's guest house is the safest option for Betty. One Sunday, Tom told his brother Dan that he was going hiking with his friend Chris. The next Saturday, the police found Tom unconscious in the forest. Dan said he had been working all week. As for Chris, he was found wandering along the highway. He explained that he had gotten lost in the forest almost immediately after they had arrived and just found his way home. One of the guys was lying. Who was it? Look at Chris. He's too well-shaven for a man who spent a week in the woods. There are five girls in the room. Ashley is drawing, Olivia is reading, Maria is playing hide-and-seek, and Emma is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Maria, of course. What number is missing? A small hint, it's not number 4. Number 5 is missing. The subsequent number of 234 is 235. In the small town of Sunshine Valley, three teachers went on a sick leave all on the same day. Jenna says she got into a car accident and broke her leg, so she can't walk. Emma complained she had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck, so she can't turn her head. And Tina says she fell from a bike and fractured her arm. But one of them is lying. Can you tell who? It's Jenna. If she can't walk, why does she even have a crutch to hold her up? If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible? The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why?
Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one, totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to, the Hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other. There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, the other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. You walk up to the edge of a forest, when suddenly you see a man in swimming trunks, goggles, and a snorkel going out of the thicket and falling on the ground as if exhausted. But you know the nearest body of water is several miles away. How did the weird man end up in the forest? There was a huge forest fire, and the plane that was extinguishing it had to scoop up water from the lake several miles away. Doing it, it accidentally captured the man snorkeling in the lake. 
he was dropped down together with the water and miraculously survived. Upon receiving an anonymous tip, the police rushed to a house where a suspect was said to be. They have no physical description, but they do know his name is John. When the cops reach the place, they see four people sitting at a table. A carpenter, a firefighter, a truck driver, and a mechanic. None of which have name tags on their uniforms. Without a moment's hesitation, they arrest the firefighter. So how did they know that's their guy? The firefighter was the only man in the room. All the others at the table were women and couldn't be named John. A man and his wife are driving down a highway when they run out of gas. So the husband decides to walk to the nearest gas station, which is about an hour's walk away. Before he heads off, he tells his spouse to stay in the car and lock all the doors and windows. The wife, bored and wanting to entertain herself, turns on the radio only to hear some shocking news. A notorious criminal has escaped from prison and was last seen on that very highway where the car is sitting. The reporter on the news gives a very detailed description of the escapee. The wife gets so scared that she quickly turns off the radio. She double-checks all the locks, but when she looks up, she sees the escapee just a few feet away from the car. When the man returns, he finds the car still all locked up, but his wife is nowhere to be seen. How is it possible? The answer is simple. The couple had been driving a convertible with the top down, and the woman wasn't, dare we say, terribly bright. An adventurer found a treasure chest in a cave that was guarded by a pirate. He had three keys, gold, silver, and black. But only one of them could open the chest. The pirate would give the adventurer only one chance to reach the treasure. If he chose the right key, he could take the chest. If he chose incorrectly, the pirate would attack him. Arr. The only clue was this cipher. Which is the right key? The cipher is an anagram. Shuffle the letters a bit and you'll get the golden key. The adventurer went away unscathed and the pirate was left frustrated and treasureless. Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes. And Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. 
she was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bear footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints, and the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites?
The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up match the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. So a restaurant owner called the police and said a customer had stolen a large sum of money. When the police arrived, the restaurant security guard already had three suspects. Thomas said, I was just walking along the street. I didn't even enter your restaurant. Dylan was angry. I've never been to this place before. I was sitting in my car when that guy ran up to me and started throwing accusations. John said, I did visit the restaurant yesterday, but I just came in to get a coffee and didn't stay longer than five minutes. After listening to the suspects, the police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Dylan. His car was parked in the place reserved for regular clients, but he claimed he'd never been to the restaurant before. Harrison was walking home when someone threw a bag over his head and knocked the guy out. When he came around, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door, and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will get locked forever. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. How did he figure it out? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. It was Sunday morning when a submarine captain found one of his sailors lying unconscious on his bunk. 
Someone had hit him on the head. It could only be another crew member. The captain had three suspects, Mateo, David, and Owen. He questioned them, and that's what they said. Mateo, I couldn't do it. I was checking the equipment in the machinery compartment. David, when it happened, I was washing dishes left after dinner. Owen, at that moment, I was busy posting a new video on TikTok. Who was lying? It was Owen. People can't use the internet for personal purposes on submarines. Leo studied art in college and rented an apartment together with his friend Andrew. Leo had bad eyesight and was wearing his glasses at all times. One day, Andrew didn't notice Leo's glasses and accidentally sat on them. They were beyond repair. Leo was so furious, he shouted at his friend, and Andrew ran away. Leo called his girlfriend and asked her to give him a lift to the optician. He couldn't drive without his glasses. They were turning onto the main road when they spotted Andrew. He was lying in the bushes, unmoving. Leo immediately called the police and ambulance. Andrew was taken to a hospital, and a police officer started to question the witnesses. Leo told him, My girlfriend was behind the wheel when I spotted Andrew. We immediately stopped and called you. We didn't see anything suspicious. The police officer arrested Leo. Why? With such poor eyesight and without glasses, how could he notice Andrew lying in the bushes? Lily called the police. She found her neighbor, a famous artist, on the floor of his apartment. The unconscious man was quickly rushed to a hospital. The police had three suspects. Lily said, I live next door. I heard some shouting and loud bangs. I went to check on what was going on and found him on the floor. Zachary told the police the artist was his friend. We agreed to meet at the restaurant, and I came to give him a lift. And Cooper said, I ordered a painting from him, but when I came to pick it up, I saw the police. Who's guilty? It's Zachary. If they agreed to meet at the restaurant, why did he come to the artist's apartment? You wake up locked in a room with no windows and just one automatic door. Above the door, there's a large screen. Suddenly, it turns on. You hear a voice. It sounds muffled. Crack this riddle and you're free to go. If not, the room will be filled with toxic gas in five minutes. After that, you see the riddle. What could it mean? Hopefully, you'll realize in time that it means sitting on top of the world. Look at these mirrors and say which one is magical. It's the one the girl in the middle is holding. Apparently, it helped her get rid of her mole. A businessman's about to go through a security check at the airport when he realizes someone's taken his luggage. Airport security officers have three suspects. Anna says she doesn't need someone's old bag. She has her own, thank you very much. Mike answers he's a light traveler and doesn't have luggage. He keeps everything in his backpack. James says he's been in a car accident recently. His arm's broken and he has a sprained ankle. He can hardly carry anything. In no time, the security officers arrest the thief. Can you figure out who it is? It's Anna. Nobody told her the bag was old. Several police officers are following a criminal. He hid in a random house. When the officers entered the building, they saw a costume party was going on and the criminal pretended to be one of the guests. The police looked at the people and soon figured out who the criminal was. How did they understand it? It's the man in the black cape. 
unlike other partygoers, he seemed to throw on everything he had at hand. Iron Man's helmet, Batman's cape, and Hulk's pants. Two young women disappeared one by one in a small town. The police found an envelope with a strange code in the first girl's apartment. In the second woman's house, they discovered another envelope, this time with a weird table. It was empty, but several squares were darker than the rest. The detective suspects the girl who will vanish next might be Madeline, Melanie, or Ariana. Can you figure out which one it'll be? After studying the code and the table, the detective realized it would be Madeline. One day, before a popular blogger conference, the security of the building where it was going to take place got a strange message. One of the bloggers is going to be kidnapped tomorrow. It'll either be Monica or Leslie. It was too late to cancel the whole thing. That's why the security officers decided to keep a close eye on the girls. During the event, the girls weren't talking to anyone suspicious. Everything and everyone looked perfectly normal. But suddenly, it became clear who was plotting against one of the girls. Can you figure it out? It was Monica. Look at that rope in her bag. She was going to get rid of her competitor. Aaron was preparing for his test for ages. He was sure his answers were correct and he'd get an A. But several days later, the teacher told the guy he wanted to talk to him. It turned out Aaron had made a tiny mistake and the professor couldn't give him the highest mark. But, the teacher said, if you manage to solve one riddle, I'll give you an A. Aaron wanted to have a good mark. Of course, he agreed. That's what his teacher showed him. After thinking for several minutes, Aaron answered, and it was correct. What did he say? In between jobs. Maria was walking home from work when she heard screaming. It was coming from the house she was passing by. The girl immediately ran in to help. She followed the voice, and it brought her to the basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Suddenly, three portals opened in front of her, but only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant poisonous snakes. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock. It would crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, five hungry crocodiles were waiting for Maria. Luckily, the girl chose the safe portal and managed to escape. Which portal was it? She picked the second one. Maria threw her shoes inside, waited for the massive stone to drop, and then walked away. Two men were playing chess. They'd already played five games, and each man had won three of them. How is it possible? The men were playing with different opponents, not with each other. Sarah and Liam had a son named Oliver. On Saturday, the couple went out for dinner and left Oliver at home. When they returned, the boy was nowhere to be found. The anxious parents called the police. A detective arrived and questioned everyone in the house. The babysitter said she'd been packing Oliver's school bag for the next day. The maid said she'd spent the whole evening cleaning the kitchen. And the cook said he had been preparing food for the next day. He was listening to music and didn't hear anything. The police immediately knew who was lying. And what about you? It was the babysitter. Children don't go to school on Sundays, so Oliver didn't need his school bag to be packed. Carl and his wife Olivia had dinner. They ate the same dishes. French fries, some fish, and vegetable salad. Half an hour later, Carl felt unwell and called the ambulance. But when specialists arrived, he was already unconscious. The man was immediately taken to a hospital. 
Luckily, doctors had enough time to save him. When they figured out what was wrong with Carl, everyone was shocked. The man had been poisoned. But how could it happen? He and his wife ate the same dishes. But Olivia was perfectly fine. Even more surprising, the next day, the police arrested the woman for trying to poison her husband. How come? Olivia made all the dishes not salty enough and put poison in the salt shaker. Peter graduated from the police academy and began to work as a trainee detective. One week after the guy started his new job, he already had the first tricky case on his hands. One of his colleagues was investigating a series of crimes connected with smuggling. She was close to solving the case. But several days ago, the woman disappeared. Peter visited the last location where his colleague was spotted and found a note. 710-5773-34-5508-517718. Peter has three suspects. Bill, a manager in an oil company. Todd, a jeweler. And John, a car dealer. Who's the criminal? Peter has managed to prove he deserves his detective badge. The guy turned the message upside down and tried to read it that way. Surprisingly, the letters made rather legible words. Bill is boss. He sells oil. Something went wrong in a super secret laboratory. There was a leak of a newly developed experimental chemical, and it made several plants and animals mutate in the blink of an eye. Scientists ended up locked in one room with the vicious monsters. One of the researchers managed to figure out how they could get out of this dire situation. But the substance they needed was in another part of the laboratory. The scientists could get there through one of three corridors. The first was guarded by fire-breathing crocodiles. Hey, it was an experimental laboratory after all. The second corridor was filled with meat-eating sunflowers with extra sharp teeth. And the third passage was swarming with venomous bees. Which one should the scientists choose? They should opt for the corridor with the sunflowers. Those are plants, and however scary they are, they can't move. Terry and Alice fell in love and started going out. But the woman's best friend Sarah was jealous of their relationship. Alice didn't want to lose her friendship and tried to keep the dates with her boyfriend in secret. That's why she left him coded messages with the places where they were going to meet. That day, Terry found a new note. It looked like this. At first, he was puzzled, but soon enough, he realized where he was going to see Alice. Can you figure it out? Alice told Terry to meet her at the street corner. Patrick called the police. The man seemed to be worried sick. My wife Victoria took our dog for a walk in the afternoon. Several hours ago, our pooch returned alone. I don't know where Vicky is. The police questioned the suspects. Mrs. Summers said she'd been watching TV all day long. I was busy delivering the mail, said the postman. I didn't have time to linger in this area, and I didn't see anything. And Mr. Thomas told the police he'd been working in his home office. The detective knew at once one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was the postman. His sleeve is a bit torn, and there's a dog bite on his arm. Plus, some black fur is stuck to his pants. Victoria's dog probably tried to protect the woman. Three expensive watches have been stolen from Mr. Brown's store this year. Uh -oh. The police can't help the poor man. He decides to hire a private detective. When Laura arrives, she immediately asks for the CCTV footage from January to December. After watching it, she tells the store owner who the thief is. What has she noticed in the video?
the same guy came to the store several times in April, August, and November. And every time, he has a cast on his arm. But no broken bone would need eight months to heal. Joe had a friend, Randy, who never answered questions directly. Once, Joe sent Randy a message, inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Randy's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money. Job in job. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Randy meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. The next time Joe texted Randy was when he needed some advice. Despite all his quirks, his friend was very good at finding solutions to difficult situations. So Joe wrote, My girlfriend took my professional camera without asking permission, and then she accidentally smashed it. What should I do? The answer was bizarre. Not that it was unexpected. Give, get, give, get. Give, get, give, get. At first, Joe didn't think he wanted to follow this advice. But a bit later, he decided it was the best course of action. What was the advice? Forgive and forget. Dylan was an extremely popular guy in his office. Tall, handsome, funny, and friendly. But there was one thing that made certain people dislike him. The man had a new girlfriend every month. That Friday, Dylan came to work happier than he'd ever felt. He finally bought the car of his dreams. At lunchtime, he went to the parking lot to check in on his new toy. Oh no! His car was a mess! Scratched and covered in paint! Dylan went pale and called security. He had three suspects, all of them his exes. Andrea said she didn't even know Dylan had got a new car. Catherine answered she'd been preparing a report for their boss and hadn't left her desk. And Mila told the guy she'd forgiven him long ago. Who ruined Dylan's car? It was Catherine. She had some smeared paint on her skirt, and the color is the same as the paint on the man's car. Two maids work in a small hotel in the mountains. One day, the hotel owner finds out one of them regularly steals stuff from guests, but he doesn't know which one it is. Look at these maids cleaning the rooms. Can you help the owner understand who's guilty? The maid on the right hasn't noticed the ring under the sofa. She might not be a great cleaner, but also not a thief. As for the maid on the left, she's spotted the ring and put it in her bucket. It means she's going to take it for herself after she finishes cleaning. She's the one who steals things. One afternoon, all the money was stolen from the register of a small cafe on the beach. The police have five suspects. All of them claim they haven't been to the cafe in the past hour. Look at them closely and try to figure out who's the thief. It's the guy with a cocktail in his hand. He definitely bought it in the cafe. But then, why did he lie about not visiting the place? Police officer Cheryl Adams was visiting her colleagues in another town. She was walking along the river, taking pictures to send to her husband, when a man crashed into her. They both fell to the ground. After helping Cheryl to her feet, the man started to apologize. It turned out someone had stolen his wallet, and he was trying to catch the thief. I was painting my boat, and my wallet was lying next to me. But then I got distracted, just for a moment. But when I turned back, the wallet wasn't there anymore. Cheryl understood the thief couldn't have gone far. She pulled the man to the nearby pier. There were four people there. After looking at them closely, the police officer knew who the thief was. Now it's your turn to figure it out. It's the man who's talking on the phone. There's some green paint on his feet. 
Julia came to have lunch in her favorite restaurant. She occupied a table near the window and put her bag in the seat next to her. Once the woman gave her order to the waiter, she went to the bathroom to wash her hands. But when she returned to the table, her bag was open and her wallet was missing. The waiter told her he had noticed only one man passing by her table. He was short, with a tattoo on his neck. He seemed to go out to the terrace. Julia rushed there and saw three people sitting at their tables. She looked at them closely and soon understood who'd taken her wallet. Who was the thief? It's the young woman on the right. You can see a wig and some men's clothing in her bag. Plus, she's wearing a turtleneck to cover her tattoo.